Hi everyone, Mark here again, and this time we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're going to be doing a shootout of different heart rate monitoring options. Now fitness has been something that's always a passion of mine, and I love my treadmill, but there's been a lot of confusion lately because wearables now do heart rate monitoring, which is very cool, but very different than what you need for fitness generally. So with a wearable, they'll sample your heart rate once a minute, once every five minutes, and then over the course of a day, that gives you a really cool insight into kind of how your heart rate changes depending on whatever's going on. Now, when you're working out, you generally need what's called a continuous heart rate monitor because once a minute or once every five minutes just isn't gonna cut it, especially with interval training or if you're trying to tune your workout based off what it's doing to your heart. So with a continuous heart rate monitor, they actually sample your heart rate several times a second and this gives you a whole host of really cool information. Right now, there's basically two technologies that are used to determine heart rate, and I'll kind of go into both of those and the pros and cons of each one. And I'll be covering three different types of heart rate monitors, so you can kind of see which one might work best for the type of workouts that you do, uh, and not just like my personal opinion. So with that, let's check them out. These are the three monitors I'll cover this time. I have a few more that I'll be reviewing in part two, so make sure to subscribe for that. The first is the Polar H7. Next is a Jabra Sport Pulse Bluetooth headphones with integrated heart rate monitoring. And finally, the Spree Bluetooth Fitness Heart Rate Monitor. The Polar works similarly to an EKG, sensing the electrical activity of the heart through sensors in the chest strap. The sensors need a little bit of moisture to activate the unit and get a good reading. The module on the front snaps into the strap, so you could replace the strap if it gets damaged. It contains the battery, Bluetooth LE transceiver, as well as the original Polar type transmitter. The unit itself is very durable and is basically waterproof and shockproof. The battery life is awesome at 350 hours and is easily replaceable with a standard CR2025. Next is the Jabra, which uses optical sensors in the earbud. By analyzing how blood flows, it's possible to determine your heart rate and other characteristics. It's a relatively new technique, but unlike the Polar, can be positioned almost anywhere. The recharge port is hidden under the black rubber covering on the opposite earbud. The battery life when fully charged is about four to five hours. There are several different black rubber coverings that you can put on the headset to help improve its fit. They're primarily used to help keep the earbuds in place. I found the ones that were on it most comfortable for me. The yellow in the earpiece can also be removed and replaced and comes with several options. These help block out ambient noise as much as possible. There's also a small volume control and power toggle on the wire connecting the two earbuds. Operation is as you'd expect, the only trick is you have to hold the power button to activate pairing. All of the operations have a voice prompt that tells you what's happening, so it's particularly easy to operate. Finally is the Spree, and this is the main sensor module. There's a USB recharge port on the side, and the optical sensors on the back, using the same approach as the Jabra. It's worth pointing out that it also has a temperature sensor as well. To use it, just grab the headband and put it inside the inner compartment. There's no on-off switch. When it detects motion, it turns itself on. They also offer this hat accessory, which basically has the same headband hidden inside. Personally, I think it's a much better option than being seen and potentially photographed wearing this headband. Battery life typically runs about six hours, but it will die after just a couple of days of no use. And be advised, the battery measurement reported via Bluetooth is not accurate. As I mentioned, fitness is something I've been into for years, and I typically buy every heart rate monitor I can get my hands on. These are some of the other ones that I did use, but don't need longer. The Garmin's are actually one of my favorites. I prefer the flexible plastic front over the cloth strap on the Polar, but I think that I'm in the minority in that. The main reason I don't use them is because I prefer Bluetooth LE over Ant, and unfortunately Garmin is in the Ant camp. So with that, let's get to some real world testing. I wrote custom software to dump the low level Bluetooth data, so no app trickery can be used to alter the data. For the hardware, I use three Blue Giga modules with their integrated stack, which is one of the best in my experience. Here I'm graphing the reported heart rates from each device. Their name color corresponds to the graph line. I'm doing a heart rate based interval workout, so we'll see some consistent changes between all devices. As you can see, at the beginning there's quite a bit of variation between the three devices. But once the workout begins, they're actually very close. The jobber went way off for some reason, and I found this happen several times in my testing, but only for a brief period. The Jabra seem to consistently over-report heart rate, and the Spree seem to under-report it. At the end, you'll see their values start to spread again. Next is the signal strength during the workout for all the devices. I consistently got a substantially better signal from the Jabra than any of the others. The Polar was the weakest, but that's probably due to the constraint of using a non-rechargeable battery. 
It's important to point out that I didn't lose connection at any point during these tests with any of these. And I positioned the transceiver about three feet away from where I was running. So in the real world, you shouldn't have any problems with interference or range if your device is close by. Since the Spree includes a temperature sensor, I decided to graph it over the run as well. Now it's a bit odd, and I'm not exactly sure how to interpret it. Obviously I wasn't 92 degrees when I started, so its accuracy is questionable, but I'm not sure if it's meant to just be used to measure a specific value, but instead the amount of change that occurs. It certainly does change during the workout, but I'm also not clear on what that means, what I'm meant to do based on that, or why I should care. I was also interested in seeing how far I could reasonably get from the transceiver, so I did a longer range test. Each spacing I move about 10 feet and then rotate in that position for 60 seconds. I didn't bother to graph the reconnections because there's a ton and obviously there's more the further away you get. Surprisingly, I was still able to sporadically get connected end data even at 60 feet away, although the spree was completely out of the game at around 30 feet. Because resting heart rate showed the biggest difference between devices, I also did a test laying on the floor for about five minutes. This was after my interval run, so my heart rate isn't gonna be as variable or low as it normally would be. I couldn't get the spree to work at all laying down. It would just stop transmitting each time. I suspect it might have something to do with the auto on off and maybe the position I laid in, but I don't know. In the end, the jobber and polar are both close, although you can see the difference is several heartbeats most of the time. But if you look at the variation, you can see a bit of a pattern emerge. If you take the completed graphs and then slide the polar back a couple seconds, you can see that they line up much more closely. I did this several times and always found the same result, and that was that there was a delay of several seconds between the reported heart rate on the polar versus the jobber and the spree. I suspect it's because optically they need several samples to determine heart rate accurately, and that introduces the delay. Not a big deal in most cases, but if you're trying to do some very short hit intervals, it could be an issue. So which one's my preference? It's gotta be the Polar. I've been using it for years. Uh, it's really reliable. It's used in clinical studies. The accuracy is top notch, so you really can't beat it. The, uh, it also includes RR interval, which is important to me. None of the optical sensors actually provide RR interval. I'm not sure why, it may be a limitation of optical sensing, but regardless, they don't provide it. So really, most of the time, the reason people don't use the chest strap, I think is because of comfort. They just don't like wearing them, they're uncomfortable. And that isn't an issue for me, but if it is for you, between the Spree and the Jabra, I think the Jabra is the most comfortable. It really is no different than any other in-the-ear headphone that I've worn in the past. Um, you know, I think comfort's good. I think the audio quality is good. The heart rate tracking is good. The price is a little on the expensive side, but it just came out, so it probably will drop over time. The uh, Spree, it, the Spree was expensive when I bought it. It was about 200 bucks originally. They've subsequently dropped it down to 60 bucks. At that price, I think it's a good deal. I hate the headband. I wouldn't be caught dead wearing it outside, but with the hat, it sort of addresses that issue. So with the hat and 60 bucks, it makes it a pretty compelling option. So if you have headphones you already like, then the Spree might be a good choice. If you don't, then the uh, Jabra is a, a good solution. Hopefully that's helped you. If you haven't found one that's a perfect fit for you, I have a part two coming up in the next week or two. So that might give you a few more options. And as always, if you like the video, make sure to comment, subscribe, and give it a thumbs up. And thanks for watching.